Here's a really nice quality of life component, the Q-Tab Panels. So we'll come in here and we'll say Q-Tab-Panels and then Q-Tab-Panel because on the outside we're going to have the panels which wraps all of the individual panels in here. So now we can say the name of this one is equal to, and I'll use my dog, so let's say Panda and then inside of here we'll have whatever our content is. So I'm literally just going to have the text Panda to keep it really simple. And then let's do a couple more. And one of these will be Lily, which is another one of my dogs, Lily. And then I have another dog called Min Min. And then we can put in here, Min Min. Save it. And by default, it doesn't do anything. We need to model something here. V dash model is equal to current tab. Copy that, come down here and we're going to import from view ref. And then we can say const current tab is equal to a ref. And let's set it to panda by default so that this tab is selected by default. So there we go. That means that panda is going to show. And then if the tab were equal to Lily, so let's copy paste that in there, then it changes to Lily. And then of course the same for Min Min. So usually you would use the Qtab panel with a Qtabs component. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but I do want to make it clear that the Qtab panels component doesn't need to be used with the Qtab component. So check this out. I can say Q dash option dash group. We'll use this component to basically show a couple of boxes that we can check that are going to show different tabs. So now I can say that the options inside of here are going to equal an array. And then let's have an object for each of the options. Label, panda, and then a name equal to panda. Put a comma in there, copy paste it down a couple of times, and we'll do the same thing for Lily. And we'll do the same thing for Min Min. Save it. And there we go. Now we need to actually model something here so that it works correctly. V dash model is equal to current tab. And now when I change the value of one of these options, it's going to change the value of the current tab. So let's try this. Oh, sorry, this shouldn't be name. This should be value. There we go. And now we can change these and the tab's going to change with it. How cool is that? Now let's play around with this a little bit. We can change this to animated, save it. And now we get that sliding animation. Another thing we can do is mess with those animations a bit. So let's say transition dash next and transition previous. And let's set those both equal to fade. So now we get a fading transition. No, we don't. So what have I done wrong there? Oh, I've added an extra S in here. Let's try it now. And now we get a fading transition. So that's pretty cool. Another thing we can do is change the duration of the transition. So we'll get rid of that and change this to transition duration. And I'll set that to 150, put the colon here. And now it goes really, really fast. <laughs> Let's change it to 50, see what that looks like. Yeah, it's so fast it looks a bit silly. But you get the idea, we can set that to any value that we want. We can also make it swipeable. So swipe able, and by this point, I might put some images in here as well so that they show up a little bit clearer. So how about this? Q dash image, and we'll set the source equal to one of my favorite sites, pixum.photos slash 1200 by 900. That's a pretty standard image size. And I'm going to copy that and paste it into both of these. However, I'm going to change the last number so that we end up with different images for all of these. Oh, I've spelled Pixum wrong. P-I-C-S-U-M. Save it. And there we go. Now it changes for each image and we get that nice slide transition as well. How cool is that? All right, what else can we do? We can also make it vertical, which means all of the animations are going to happen vertically. So check this out. Vertical. Save it. And now the animations are just going to go vertical instead. So that's good to know. And now of course, I wanna show using the Qtab panels using the Qtabs component, because usually you would use Qtab panels with the Qtabs component. So let's come up here and we'll say Q-Tabs. I'm gonna whack this out quickly. And then inside of there, how about we copy all of these tab panels? We're gonna cheat a little bit here. 
paste that into the Q tabs and select that, Control D, 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 D. So just press Control D over and over again. And then we can change that to Q dash tab. So now they've all got the correct name. And then I should be able to just get rid of everything inside each of these, like so. Save it. And last of all, we need to add in the labels. So double click, Control D, Control D, across, 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 Control Shift, across, copy, across, across. And now I can say label is equal to, and then Control V, and it's going to paste those in the right spot. And there we go. Now we can go Panda, Lily, Min Min, except this isn't being V modeled. So let's come up here and say V dash model is equal to current tab. And there we go. How cool is that? Now, of course, you would come over here and probably not use vertical in this case. And that makes a little bit more sense. And let's play around with the design a little bit here. Another thing we could do is make the tabs vertical. Save that. And there we go. We could do that. And let's see if we can put this in a row. Let's say class is equal to row. Yeah, and then maybe I can go full width here. Or maybe set like the class equal to column for the tab panels. Yeah, so that's another option that you've got there. And since they're vertical, maybe we could make this change vertical as well now. There we go, you get the idea. There's all sorts of different options that you can do here. And as I mentioned in the QTab video, I do usually recommend using Q-Route-Tab. And the cool thing about Q-Route-Tab is it means you can easily align it up with the current route that you're on. So now I can come down here and say two is equal to panda. And I'll do the same for Lily and Min Min, Lily, Min Min. And that's going to take me to the corresponding route, which doesn't exist yet. So let's go control P, routes to jump into our routes file. I'm going to copy paste this down three times. One, two, three, add the commas in there. And then set the paths. So one was panda, another one was Lily, and the other one was Min Min. Save that so that the routes exist, and they're basically just taking us back to this same page, the index page. But now, as I change the tab, it also changes the route. And that means once I'm on this Min Min page, I can refresh the page, and it takes me right back to that same tab. So that's really good to know. I highly recommend using the route tab when it makes sense, rather than just a Q tab component. There are some situations where it doesn't make sense. For example, when you have a lot of tab panels and you can't really route the current tab that you're on, but usually on a page, you're just going to have one route tab and one set of tab panels. So it is in that case better to use routing for your tabs. All right, let's go to one more thing, which is playing around with the methods on the QTab panel component. So let's come down here and we'll say ref is equal to tab panels and i'm going to copy that tab panels and then come down here and underneath it we're going to have some buttons that allow us to basically just call some of the methods on the tab panel component so we can say q dash button and then when you click on this button we're going to say hey i want you to jump into our refs so dollar sign refs dot tab panels and then we can call a method on this component. So basically by doing this, by saying ref is equal to tab panels, it means we can grab this component. So grab the component itself and then start calling methods on it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying dive into my refs and one of them is going to be tab panels because we set it here. Jump into the tab panels component and then call next. Let's try that one. And let's set a label on this button of next. All right, we've got some weird design, but it should still work. Let's go to this one. Next, next. Now notice that I can't press next anymore when I'm on the last one. What you can do is actually come up here and say infinite. And by infinite, it means we can just keep pressing next to our heart's content. and It'll just take us back to the start. So that's kind of cool. And once again, you can do this without having tabs and just having tab panels. So let's get rid of that. Save it. And there we go. You can do like a carousel type thing. Now we've got next and of course we have previous as well. Previous. 
and let's copy paste that there. So we can call on tab panels the previous function and that's going to take us backwards and this will take us forwards. And the last one I want to show you is go to. So we can now say go to min min and then say go to and then jump to a very specific panel such as min min. Now go to min min takes us straight to the min min page. So next, 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 whatever, go to min min and it takes us straight to that very specific tab. So how cool is that? We have total control over this component. <laughs> I'm sorry we ended up with like such ugly theming at the end here. Actually, that's gonna drive me nuts. So how about we do this? Let's change that from a row to a column. There we go. Still not great, but you get the idea. So have fun playing with the Q tab panels component and I will see you in the next video.